Well, he's not here to talk about music this morning. He's here to talk about poetry. Paul Kelly, singer-songwriter. Good morning to you, Paul. Good morning. How are you? Good. Nice to see you again. You've You've got a compilation of poetry, not your own, of others, called Love is Strong as Death. Mm -hmm. That must have been some fun. I spent yesterday afternoon reading it. You must have had fun. Oh, it was was great fun. I had... uh... I've been. I worked on it for about nine months. Um, suggested to me by my publisher la, early last year, and I started putting some of my favourite poems together. And then probably the best part was going discovering new poetry as I read more and more, and and po- poets led me to other poets, and people made recommendations, and it's just a, a great voyage of discovery for me. Um, and it's interesting because one of the most famous quotes about poetry is, "Poetry is what's lost in translation." However, some of my favourite poems in your book are poems that have been translated from a language other than English into English, and they still work. Yeah, I think, you know, they, they, may, they may lose some things. Obviously, they lose certain kind of music in translation, and, but some poets um, really work well in translation. I, I think poets sometimes talk about ideas more than, you know, where the, the mu- musicality of the poem is not as... as uh, important to say the ideas there's a polish poet in the book called Wisława Zimborska and she's she has a sort of uh, a really interesting way of looking at things she wasn't the one who wrote 4am yeah that's the one yeah, yeah. I, I read 4am on air earlier to john yeah, yeah. i love 4am the hour of ants yeah, yeah. if the ants are having fun that's fine yeah. but bring on five o'clock cause, yeah. you know if we because we got work to do um and it's not it's not as if this is all a collection of obscure poetry you will find the man from Snowy River. You'll f- find the streets of Laredo. Oh, that's right. Well, actually, there's two banjo Patterson poems, but Snowy River didn't make it. But there's Clancy the Overflow. Oh, sorry, Clancy the Overflow. And um, what's the other one? The man from Ironbark. Um, and I still think when I reread uh, Clancy the Overflow yesterday, that that one particular line, and he sees the vision splendid of the sunlit plains extended. Yeah, that is magnificent. Oh, and, and wonders at the glory of oh, the everlasting yeah. stars. Yeah. Just I'm, glorious. I'm sitting in my dingy little office where a stingy ray of sunshine struggles feebly down. Yeah. yeah it's great. So when you collect poetry like that, do, do you do you think of things to put music to? Uh, there's about probably about 40, 40 to fifty of the poems in the book I have put music to because I've been doing that over the last six years just just for fun. Some of some of the some of those pieces have ended up on records, and some I've just got. Uh, still sitting on the shelf. Well, the one, the one I pointed out to you before, the magpie, for example, it's got a rhythm, a, a beautiful rhythm to it that just cries out to be sung, doesn't it? Because it's got the waddle, dawdle, dawdle, dawdle of the magpie. Quite a little, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, that's it. I have put music to that one. The magpie's by Dennis Glover, who's a New Zealand poet. And uh, I think there's also been some other musical versions of that too. It, it just reads like a song lyric, and it's really easy to put music to. I sat in the back room reading uh, reading your, your collection of poems yesterday. Is there a way that you like to a, sit, a, a situation in which, a setting in which you like to read poetry? Oh no, everywhere. I think that's uh, the great thing about poetry is you can because you know you can read a short poem, you can read it on the tram, you can read it um, read it you know waiting waiting in a queue. You can you obviously re- read it at home, um, read it travelling. These days, you know, with with a with a phone, and you can just look up look up a poem on the phone and read it while you're waiting for a friend. What I enjoy is reading it and then coming across something that really resonates, and you think, "Wow, there's a poem here called Immigrant Blues." Oh right? yeah, about the difficulty that immigrants have in assimilating into a society. The last line of which is. I want to sing, but I don't know any songs. Yeah. yeah. How evocative of, is that of an immigrant experience? You know, that I, I'm keen to get involved, but I don't quite know how it works. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's a ripper, that one. Who are the most poetic of songwriters, do you think? Oh, I think Leonard, Leonard Cohen. Oh, I've written down there. Leonard Cohen. Mm. Did, yeah, I mean, he, obviously he was, a, he was a poet before he wrote songs. He was a, a novelist and a poet. Uh, he kept writing poetry separately to songs as well. Are you familiar with any of the work of Guy Clark? Oh, yeah. The American. Oh, I mean, yeah. He's a genuine poet, isn't he? Yeah, Randall Knife. That's, <laughs> there that's, we go. That's a classic. Yeah. <laughs> my, hand, my hand burned for the Randall yeah, Knife. LA Freeway. Yeah. 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 I was listening to one of his good advice. I was listening to one of his songs yesterday. Yeah. Well, he wrote a song called Immigrant Eyes about his grandfather, I think. Yeah, I don't know that one. Who came to uh, El- through El- Ellis Island. Yeah, yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah. I like the fact that you say in your preamble that you have set certain rules, and that is that no songs were allowed to be included, 
and then you made a few exceptions. <laughs> yeah, that's the good thing about making the rules. You can, you're allowed to have a few exceptions, and I think every rule, you know, needs to be you know, at least broken a, yeah. a little bit without without wrecking the whole thing. But I did in, I did include um, "Took the Children Away" by Archie Roach. Yeah. I think it's you know one of the most important songs from uh, 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 from the last century in, in Australia, and uh, also a Kev Carmody song, which was I know was written as a poem first. So I thought. That, that can get through, yeah. And I thought the streets of Laredo would be an exception, except, however, it's genuinely a poem, isn't it? Yeah, a lot, a lot of songs are poems first. Danny Boy was a poem before it became a song, but so that's why Danny Boy's in there as well, as well as Streets of Laredo. And there's all, all sorts of different versions of the Streets of Laredo. Yeah, well, I hopped on the internet and did a bit of Googling and read the suggestion that the Streets of Laredo, which is about the bloke who's been shot in the guts, talking to the narrator about, you know, hang with me, I'm going to die, Yeah, was originally an Irish song about a bloke who had VD. That's the way you have folk songs, sort of folk <laughs> songs, sort of they mutate and they they, um, they just seem to sort of uh, change with the different singers and over the years they uh, they jump from country to country, you know. Yeah, and um, I don't want to turn it into the Brownlow medal, but have you got favourites? Oh, have I got It's It's... It's hard. The, the one, um, it's a poet, Israeli poet called Yehuda Amahai, who I, I just love as a poet, and I've got about f four or five of his in, in here. Um, I love, you know, I have to say I love sh Shakespeare because that was... Yeah, there's plenty of Shakespeare, plenty of Willie Wobble it, stick in it, isn't there? Most, yeah, most, he's got the biggest tally, Shakespeare, so mm. if ever I would uh, ask for who my favourite writer is, I would say Shakespeare. Any Robbie Burns in there? You did, after all, oh, right, old lang uh, Yeah, a man's a man for all that. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, uh, when I was reading this yesterday, I remember an article I read years ago in The New Yorker, and I, and I looked it up, and it is there. It's an interesting concept. A couple of journos in America, there's a famous baseball commentator called Phil Rizzuto, mm -hmm. and they've got excerpts of his baseball commentary and turned it into poetry. It is absolutely magnificent. You should look it up. Phil Rizzuto is his name. They turn it into a poem so that he's saying things like... Um, that's uh, out of here. No, no, no. I bumped into Paul Kelly the other day. Yeah, he's looking well, still uh, writing songs. And that's out of here. <laughs> <laughs> and, he, and he goes from... And it, it's called Holy Cow. I think it's absolutely brilliant. You've got the release of uh, a new album, Songs from the South, mm -hmm. 1985 to 2019. Yeah, it's an update of the uh, the greatest hits collection. So the last last time we had songs from the south out was about ten years ago. So it's including it's sort of an updated version with songs from the last ten years. Right. So you can uh, you can pre-order the book. Love is as, love is strong as death. Uh, now it's available from the nineteenth, which can't be that far away. Monday. Monday comes out Monday. Um, and today is the release of your new album, Songs from the South, nineteen eighty five to twenty nineteen. I can heartily recommend this book of collected poetry. You will just disappear into it one afternoon or one night. You will you will just immerse yourself in it. To rhyme or not to rhyme? Oh, I think but no. both, both. I mean, yeah. I, I love rhyming. Obviously, write, writing songs, I'm probably a bit of a sucker for a rhyme, but... Some, you know, great, there's great poems that don't rhyme. John, John Milton was famously against rhyme and he, was, he wrote 500 years ago. So it's not just a modern thing. Right, I'm about to be humiliated, I know. We were discussing a song of yours on the wireless last week uh, to her door and I, and I said, it's an interesting song because it contains brands like Silver Top mm -hmm. and I said, and Olympic Tyres. Mm -hmm. And then people rang up and said, no, the Olympic in that song is not Olympic tyres, it's an Olympic bus. Yeah, there used to be a bus line called Olympic. Yeah, but uh, they're not around anymore, so I sing McCafferty's these days. <laughs> 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 Paul, lovely to see you again. That is a beautiful uh, collection. Love is strong as death. Nice to see you again. You too. Thanks very much for having me, guys. Shower two developing with a top.